Hi, I'm Kunal Mehta from Commodities Control Bombay and today we have Mr. Prashant Mohota who is the Managing Director of Jima Tex. We have some few questions in relation to the textile industries and Mr. Prashant Kumar Mohota will help us to clear out all our doubts in relation to textile industries. So Mr. Mohota, how has the textile industry grown over the years in the past 10 years or something in India? In India, the textile growth has been a uh, little slow compared to what other countries in the neighboring region have grown, particularly Bangladesh and uh, Vietnam. Even China has had an exemplary growth rate in the last 10 to 15 years. In India, the sector was marred with a uh, lot of extra additional investment and low value added, added products because of which uh, our focus has always been on more on commodities mm -hmm. and uh, we could not establish uh, a brand name for uh, Indian textile products. Okay. And how do you see the procurement for a spinning mill basis? Because what I am hearing from many spinners that they are not running on a parity basis. Uh, is that true? Like, no, at the moment it is not true. At the moment the prices have gone down pretty well. And there is a good, uh, reasonably good margin now available for spinners. Uh, yes, had it been a month back, you would have been right where the cotton prices were hovering around uh, 41,000. But now with prices around 38,500, I think the margins have come back to spinning. Okay. And if this uh, situation continues, then I think spinning will uh, will be able to have reasonably good, a good year ahead. Okay, so that will be domestically as well as internationally or just uh, both, both the markets together? Internationally, it is even better at the moment because internationally the cotton prices are very high. Okay. Still, they remain to be quite high because a, a lot of places there has been a lot of issues about the environment. Mm -hmm. Particularly when, with US and with Pakistan. US has suffered with a lot of hurricanes and Pakistan has got some bollworm attack. Okay. So because of which the prices internationally are remain to be quite high and China is also has a lot of buying requirement. Okay. Because even they have reduced their production. Okay. So cotton per se will have a lot of demand. Mm -hmm. and, and because cotton there is a restriction on import by China. So there will be a lot of demand in cotton yarn. Okay. And I am seeing at least from our business also I am seeing a lot of demand coming in from China. Okay. So for exports and domestic I see a good time ahead for cotton textile. Yeah, so you see the supply prospects will be quite higher this year according to you. Like yeah, it also depends on the volume that India grows because today the talks are going on that there will be almost 385 lakh bales. So if it doesn't uh, come up to that level, probably the prices will again go up. So. A uh, lot of factors are there. Cotton prices are actually a result of multiple number of factors and it's not easy to predict the prices. Okay. But if if this, I can tell you that if this happens, this is what will happen. Okay. So if there is a production of 385 lakh bales and Pakistan sector doesn't open up, then I don't think it will be too comfortable. But if the production goes down and Pakistan also opens up with China already opening up, I think it's a good prospect. One more thing now, since you say that volatility in the market has grown in the cotton industry, so the risk has factor also has grown tremendously. So if you see major fluctuation in the market and since you're a very big industry player, how do you hedge your risk in the market if you have any uh, way to hedge your risk? No, we as a, we are particularly integrated players, so we have the additional advantage of being into ginning and spinning both. Okay. So not for everyone, there's a lot of people are into only spinning. Very few are able to have a ginning because it requires different kind of setup mm -hmm. and very different mindset also. Mm -hmm. So uh, for us, we become naturally hedged. Okay. But still, many times we use the platforms like uh, NCDX and uh, MCX where you have options mm -hmm. and uh, futures of cotton available as of now. So these are additional uh, facilities where the cost of hedging and cost of uh, securing yourself is much lower than actually procuring the raw material today itself and uh, stacking it. So such kind of good things are available but uh, still we do not do it too much for the reason that we ourselves are Jinnar and we are sitting in the cotton bowl where we have a lot of cotton available. Okay. So sometimes we see the advantage of very good quality of cotton coming in the beginning of the season. So we probably use that method but many times we also use the hedging method on the platforms various platforms okay. Okay. so where do you see india going forward like is how much growth can india go compared to the other markets at the moment so you see bangladesh vietnam growing at a very higher rate compared to india so where do you see india in the export market the growth potential is immense because the uh, market size is very big Particularly considering that uh, China's cost is going up in the recent years and some market will be vacated by China which is there for other countries to take, take over. So considering that India has a very high potential of growth, 
and uh, i think even after gst implementation with cotton being at 5% mm -hmm. this is a golden opportunity for uh, in cotton textile in india to grow not only in domestic but also for exports okay